I'm Barry. And I'm Ben. We're the Geography, Geography Men. Men. And today we're going to be building a model of uh, Studland Sand Dunes. And in order to build a model of Studland Sand Dunes, you're going to need some seaweed, an area of flat sand, which I prepared earlier, some marrow grass, some heather, and some twigs of wood. Sand dunes often start in a place where there's a large amount of sand being washed ashore. Now and again, a large storm will come along and deposit a line of seaweed, a strand line on the beach, like this. That strand line will sit on the beach and sand will blow over the beach and will start to become trapped within seaweed and will start to form what is called an, an embryo sand dune. Over time, that embryo sand dune uh, will start to become colonised by a range of highly adapted uh, plant species known as pioneer species. These are species that can cope with extreme uh, shortage of fresh water, streams of salt, uh, wind and uh, being buried by blown sand. A really great example of this is the marrow grass. So here we have our embryo dune starting to be uh, colonised by our pioneer species, marron grass. Marron grass is a really easy species to remember the name of. It's spelt M-A-R-R-A-M. -R -R if you spell it backwards, it's M-A-R-R-A-M. -R -R There's no excuse for forgetting that one. Over time, the embryo dune becomes stabilised by the root systems of the pioneer species and uh, is often then referred to as a, a semi-fixed dune or a yellow dune. And of course, during this period of time, quite often more sand will have been washed onto the beach and at a later stage there might be another storm bringing another load of seaweed onto the beach which would be deposited in front of that initial dune and that strand line in turn would then trap lone sand and another embryo dune would be formed in front. That embryo dune in turn would be colonised by the pioneer species, as you know one of which is the marron grass but there are many others, sea lime grass, sea couch grass, sand sedge and so on. Now, at this point in the story, this dune, considerably older dune now, will have started to become very stable with all the root systems binding the sand together. A lot of the barren grass will be dying and adding organic matter to the soil. It's further from the sea so it's not so windy, it's not so sandy, it's not so salty. The organic matter is holding the moisture so there's a lot more moisture and nutrients in the soil and so other types of plants can start to move into this area and outcompete the pioneer species. And here at Studland the next stage of this succession is um, heathers moving in and creating a lowland heath habitat. Whilst all this is going on, of course, more and more sand is being washed ashore, the beach is getting wider, there may be another time, there's a storm, another strand line forms, that in turn gets covered by sand, another embryo dune forms, that in turn gets colonised by the pioneer species. Heathers will start to grow on this sand dune, outcompeting the pioneer species. And amongst the heathers, by that point, 
small trees are starting to grow and they in turn outcompete the lowland heath and you end up with a woodland. And that pattern of three dunes formed over a period of about 400 years here at Studland is what you will see if you walk from the beach over the first dune into the first slab, over the second dune into the second slab, and over the third dune and off to the little sea. The sand dune nearest to the beach will be dominated by marron grass and pioneer species. The sand dune second in will be dominated by heathers and further in you will start to find the woodland. That is an example of a sand dune succession.